That was sweet, very sweet. Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. Today we're in Carlisle, Pennsylvania at the Chrysler Nationals. And I'm at Allen who has a great car. And if you wanna see great cars, take a look in the description. You'll see the Carlisle events and come to a great car show. Allen, your last name? My last name is Alan Peterson. And the car you brought today, a legendary Mopar. 1967 Hemi Coronet RT. Hemi Coronet RT with a four speed. So let's take a look at our featured attraction. Alan, come right alongside me. Sure. And let's talk about this one. Now your daughter calls it the diva. Yes, she <laughs> calls it a diva. It's a, it's a little cranky about starting up as most Hemis are. Uh, very large intake ports. And uh, this has a choke that is there only in name. How well long have you had it? I have owned this car for about 10 years. Come on alongside me. We'll take a look at the side of it. So you've got a story with this one. Obviously, Mopar Black will come right alongside it so we can see it. Tell me how this one, we'll kind of condense it a little bit, how it became yours. Well, this belonged to a friend of mine, Nick uh, Satinstein, for over 30 years. Uh, I got it after he had passed away. Uh, you want me to tell the story of the? Sure. It? Okay. We, uh, I was looking at cars online, and I found a '68 that I liked, and I suggested to my wife that we get out and buy the car in Florida and drive it home. My she, wife. She asked, wasn't keen on that idea. No. All right. So she, that idea went away. <laughs> I was telling a friend of mine from Boston story. And we, he laughed and we went back and forth a little. And he asked me if I was still looking for something like this. And I said, well, yeah, of course. You know, and I said, I gotta be kind of affordable. Sure. So he said uh, that Nick's car was still available. It was in a consignment shop in Westchester and I should go up and look at it. I did. Uh, you have the keys to the trunk, by the yeah. way? Let's open that up. Go ahead. I uh, went up and looked at the car, and uh, and this is a survivor. Yes, this is a survivor. This paint is mostly original. You can see there's even the crayon mark on the inside of the trunk lid for the tire size. So let's talk about this shirt. This is Nick's shirt. Yep. Nick was a Mac tool salesman, and that was a shirt that was one of his giveaways. Yeah. And uh, he gave, I was actually one of his customers, and I got that shirt from him. And <laughs> ironically, I hadn't seen it in a while, and it fell out of the drawers that I keep my t-shirts in a few weeks after I brought this car home. Wow. So, a little spooky, but... <laughs> Wow, and you actually brought it to his wife and said she can have it, and yep. she said... She said no. She said that belongs with the car. This belongs with the car. All right, let's... Uh, go, may I open the door and go into the interior? Absolutely. We'll close that. So now you're looking for the car. How has it finally become yours? Well... You're at the consignment it, shop. It, it actually started out here. Um, we were... I was here at Carlisle, and uh, my friend Mike called me and said that uh, Nick's widow was here, and they were selling off a bunch of Nick's parts. I should come down and say hello. So I did, and it started to rain, which, you know, thunderstorms happen here every summer, so we were all standing underneath a 10 by 10 easy up, and we were all kind of nose to nose, and Jamie finally remembered who I was at that point. His wife. Yeah, this is Nick's widow and she... The right amount of pedals, by the way. Yeah, she says to me, now I know who you are. Just like that. Let's go talk about the car. Wow. So... Is this 31,000 original miles? That's or... original miles, yes, sir. Wow, all right, go ahead. So she, uh, you know, we, we, we talked back and forth about, you know, what the car was, what it meant to her. She'd wish, you know, she kind of wished that the, their boys were more interested, but they weren't. So she said, uh, let's, you know, I'd like you to drive it before you go to 
make any offers or anything. And I said, okay, you know. So I went back to the consignment shop. I took a friend with me because I figured I needed a, somebody with a conscience. Because <laughs> I was at that point about ready to sign over the mortgage to my house. <laughs> and, Let's open uh, the hood, shall we? Sure. Go ahead. So we went back up with uh, my another friend named Mike, and we took this for a ride. And he had actually been out with me to look at another car about four or five months earlier. There we go. And he told me, he said, if I didn't buy this car, I was nuts. So. You went home. You, now, how did you confront the wife? Well, I went home and I told her, you know, I, well, I actually called Nick's widow on the way home and told her, you know, I'd driven the car. And I said, you know, I said, I got to be honest with you. I really like it. I said, this is, you know, a good car, and especially for the money. So. So now you're confronting the wife. Yeah. So I went home, told my wife, and she said, well, I hope you're right. Well, I brought the car home maybe a week or two later. Yeah. And I took her for a ride in it, and she was all smiles. There we go. She was like, you know, there this is go. a nice car. Happy I like. ending. Yep. <laughs> I was a little pins and needles there, Alan. Yeah. But we have a happy ending to our story. Let's start this one up, shall we? Okay. What a great story for your car. The Survivor Hemi. Can you step on the brakes for one minute? I just want to see the tail lights. Let me listen to it idle for a minute, Alan. Sure. Let me listen to it idle for a minute. Sure. Let's, uh, let's take this one for a ride, shall we? All right. Let's do it. So Alan and I are in the 68 426 Hemi 4-speed. Does it still feel as good as the first day you got it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I drive this. I can't wipe the smile off my face for a couple of hours. Uh, you're the right owner for this car. Yeah. What made the Hemi the car for you? Well, I always wanted to have a Hemi car. Why is that? Well, it's the most powerful engine ever built. Yeah, it's got the reputation. And a four-speed. Yeah. And it's black. Yeah, like, all, all, all the boxes are checked. <laughs> all the boxes are checked for sure. Is this one that I'm actually going to... Well, you can't go... Yeah, just keep going straight. You'll know. What's the reaction when people see it? Do they wonder if it's a real one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get that all the time. So then what, you just show them the Vintag or something like that or... Well, I don't. The truth is, it's yeah, it's the real deal. It's a real and deal. it's a survivor. Yeah. Wow. Super cool. Just, it's fun even just riding in it. Yeah. You know, what a great moment. I'm so glad that your wife kind of had that great reaction too, yeah. right? Yeah. That she, makes it a happy yeah, story. She does like the car. <laughs> I would say who doesn't, but yeah. there are people who, you know, they're not car people. I get it. Give it a little, go up this hill, we'll give it a little, a little acceleration here. Alright, we got kids over here. <laughs> that was, that was good. Kick the front carburetor in a little bit. <laughs> Kick the front carburetor in. 
But what a great time here in Carlisle, as you can see, as we coast back home, driving this one back. Yeah, it's a kick to it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely puts a smile on your face. Oh, yeah. It's a wonderful car. We're going to keep cruising just a little bit more as we cruise into the car show. Catch the reactions of people like that. Alan, what a treat being in your car. Thanks for being so kind and bringing it out. Thanks for being in my car story. Thank you. You're welcome.